Hey guys, this is Garis. Welcome back to another episode of Survivor Done. Uh, we are back here in Minecraft Plus and today marks a quite a big milestone. We are on episode 50, so today we are not going to do anything. Today we are going to take a look around at all our projects and everything we've done up until this point. Um, so this might be a short episode, might be a long one, but it's a rambling episode, so it's up for that one so um in the previous episode we went ahead and go went to check out treasures and so on and in the next episode we will finish that and go set up a base over by the guardians um guardian temple or the deep ocean temple and to make a new project of making a guardian farm but um today we're just rambling so let's get out of here and let's go into creative mode because for this we are going to fly around we're not going to walk around so um you go to sit go to your pause menu go to open to land and then you say allow cheats or just uh, just allow cheats so land world and then we go game mode creative i remember when it was zero and one Yes, now we're in creative mode. Okay, so we are not going to do everything. Um, we're just going to do one less than we normally did. So we started. Spawn is right here. Spawn was right there. And we came across this way. And we found this patch of grass. And we started to build a base here. So we just <laughs> made a small cube here. And we went into um, we made the staircase downwards and we started making a mine down here and bamboo here wheat farm here and some trees for harvesting and cocoa beans to make cookies so we started with making cookies so we spent the first two or three episodes here i believe and then we went on to looking for greener pastures uh, almost chose this spot but then not uh, found a village almost started here I think I considered this I can't remember exactly it's what it's what 50 episodes ago it's at least three or four months I can't remember when was the first Minecraft episode that we did or Minecraft plus episode and eventually came down here missed this village completely and somewhere along the line I got to right where we're standing now and this is where we started <laughs> the series so yeah there was nothing there just a piece of mountainous area a river running through and a lot of grass and trees and there was another hill here if i remember correctly we cleared that out and yeah we made this our own so we still need to flatten this area out and we can build something here this is our somewhat automated tree farm so it doesn't really do anything uh, we just place a sapling there and as soon as it grows there uh, come on fly there we go this pist um, row of pistons pushes the row forward and once it completes a row this redstone torch will send a signal and will push this whole block forward and when we have actually have a full block we'll harvest everything it's quite slower than you would like because it's a manual action um, so you can stand here with um, bone meal which is now finished and you can grow a tree it will push you place another sapling grow a tree and so on and then you can actually at the end of the day have this quite a lot quicker than just waiting for it i'm just waiting for it because i usually just go harvest some of these dark oak wood when i want to have wood okay so um our first thing actually was this um, cow farm and sheep farm i believe then we started doing here we had a small furnace room here that we started doing without the um, blast furnaces and 
And at a later stage, we started doing this wheat farm that we uh, meet the lever down below. And it will trigger these pistons. We can actually not disable it now. And, and it will wash down the wheat farm over wheat into this hole. Very low tech. And we can come and collect it down here. It will go into hopper. And it will go into the chest and we can collect it. So this is was before we have uh, the auto storage system. Um, yeah, so not a lot that we've done, but we have got a, quite a few episodes in and we've done a lot. So our farm is, oh, not our farm, our mine is down here. So this changed a lot too. Okay, strip mine to light up caves. Huh. Oh yeah, we're in, sorry, we're in creative mode, so I'm just going to do this. I'm going to throw that out. Our stone pickaxes <laughs> that we used to use to mine down here. And then we can sleep if we see it's dark. This was closed. And we did the strip mining up and down here. Interesting. So it's not complete yet. We can still do a lot of <laughs> mining still. And we still need to because we're going to need diamonds soon. Oh, since we're in cheat mode, uh, time save day. Okay. Uh, I can't re remember the order of what we did. But yes, yeah, so that was our mine. This is, was our cow farm or food farm. It was much smaller when we initially started. We had wheat farms here and there. So this was manually once. I keep them here because usually when I need it, I need a bunch. Maybe once we go move to a new farm or new place, we might increase the size of this. We do proper overdone. <laughs> what do you guys say? We make it four patches in this direction, four patches into this direction. So this count is one patch, one patch, one patch. We make it staggered. That might work. That might work. We make a staggered type of wheat farm high up. And our iron golem farm. So as soon as a iron golem spawns, it falls below 20 meters, I believe, or 24 meters below the village. So this is recognizes a village by the game. There's bears, there's villagers. There's, there's enough of them for them to feel frightened and then they will spawn a iron golem up here somewhere. This is slabs, so they won't spawn on top of here. This is staircases, so they won't spawn on top of that. And then they goes to the middle and it spawns one every minute. So <laughs> that is 60 iron golems every hour. So that's about 200 plus minus iron every hour that we get from this iron farm. So we can increase this size. This was our first mob spawner. Yes, first and only one. We've made a few from a few, um, what do you call it? Spawners in the world, dungeon, dungeon spawners and so on. This worked okay for a while. Uh, once we like lit up all the caves um, our automatic what do you call it bamboo farm as soon as this bamboo grows in front of the observer it will eat, um, trigger a row of pistons down here and it will harvest them and below there is a minecart hopper oh no not hopper yeah yeah hopper minecart going up and down and it deposits everything into a row of uh, what do you call it? Hoppers. <laughs> and that goes down here. Comes down here. Yes. Right above us. So this road. Where is that? There. 
Okay, somewhere above here it comes down straight into here and then it goes into our storage system. So this is our storage system, automatic storage system. Drop off chest, everything we get to collect through our adventures. We come back, we drop everything here and it gets auto sorted into our storage system. So we have two sets of doubles. Okay, so each each set or station or however you want to say has three double chests and this one has two sets of those for cobblestone mossy cobble and so on we have quite a few but we are running out of space unfortunately because we have 64 stations or 65 if you count the the um, ender pearl stations i uh, still need a um, emerald ore diamond ores we have gold ores we've got a few and we need to make more for nether stuff so we need to get at least another hallway like this in so we once we go and find a new place to live we can <coughs> excuse me we can plan out larger because now i know what i've done wrong here this is the biggest at the sorting system I've made in vanilla Minecraft so that was interesting so for one I'll make it see at the moment this is our floor so the floor is down there so this is a floor above our so there's only one block between that and here and we're running out of space so I would have liked to have this drop two more so that we can have more space because for one this is our auto smelter it can't do anything oh no no wrong that is why i said can't do anything but anyway <laughs> um it comes up here and then it has to fall into one of those hoppers to go into our sorting system and if we have a full block here some of the blocks disappears for some reason doesn't shoot up or anything it just disappears don't know why or what when or how or what but yeah that happens and um yeah so f first thing is i'll have more space between the basement layer and our actual living layer or however you want to say it and i'll bring this down two more um, sets of chests so it will be five double chests so that we don't have a double system like this and then i will also change it that for like um, saplings so the wood this is usually for wood is dark oak so it fits five the bottom two will be for saplings and the top three will be wood. or only the bottom one will be sapling so then we can actually have a whole oof, not, not enough space here have another filter system at the lower level just for the saplings so that it that we don't send the saplings to this type of sorting system because now the saplings need to come here so i would have liked to have them at the same spot i uh, will get a few and maybe the next one will use ice maybe we can have just a long hallway with just chase we'll see anyway and um yeah this is our storage system as i said this is for all the random things like different tools space all the all the redstone items space all the place all the not space armors all our plant stuff food stuff saplings wood blocks not the wood itself and the logs this is a wood and wood items and then this is a last chest so this is all miscellaneous items comes and drops here so things that does not have a place to go comes here so now we can see what we actually have a place to do so this goes here we can't um, sort saddles because it only stacks one things that stacks one we can't unfortunately um use a filter for okay so that's the sorting system that was one of my bigger projects on here 
and then we have a a farm this was to actually populate more villagers but actually i did it wrong because i could, could have just let the villagers populate there and a few did actually so there was enough beds up there just throw them food and they will populate we didn't need this but i still wanted to change this to a auto farm because these two will throw um carrots to each other and then if we underneath have a hopper minecart running up and down all the time or a few it will pick up those <laughs> carrots that fall on the ground and we can let it go to a central space so that's interesting and then we have our auto honey farm so those five hives at the back here is manualized so we can grab glass bottles and go fill it up but there's two hives here one over there and one over there so if you know this i'm sorry about that but i'm showing everything and if we go down here so i'm going to go down here we have a sorting system that basically picks up if there's honey and it will pull it and send it here and then we have an item elevator popping them into the chest so we auto harvest honey blocks so we don't really need the manual ones and honey blocks are used for a lot of, lot of things so honey blocks and slime blocks we use them here our first project using them is a ice farm if you go down here honey blocks and um, slime blocks doesn't connect to each other but they do connect to solid blocks so if this fires it pushes everything upward because each piston only has a limit of 12 blocks so we did it like this so that's three block um, stone blocks three ice blocks and a three honey blocks so that's nine blocks that this one pushes each piston pushes nine blocks independently so you can large um, increase the size to one more so that it's 12 of course the limit is 12 but yeah so that's our ice farm our wheat farm our honey farm our carrot farm we have so much carrot so that's why i actually did not um, set up the auto collector of carrot yet if you look here we still have a bunch of carrots i'm wondering actually to switching out steak to carrots actually using golden carrots if you look at golden carrots they have three food and two four six seven and a half saturation whereas this only has two four six and a half so it's one saturation more but still okay let's do the daytime thing again and then we have our enchanting room and the only modded block we've added so we are minecraft plus because we have added a few mods for one the journey map here we have any eye and then this is the only modded block is a chunk loader so that our base kit is permanently chunk loaded and then one of my more proud items as well is an auto um, potion room auto potion crafting so over here you choose what you want to craft uh, buffer fish is water breathing regeneration he healing uh, fire fire resist slow falling speed and night vision so over here we want to have jumping waste what's the other one leaping but for that we need rabbit's foot which is very scared apparently and we choose with this every time we choose a different piston pops up there and this is our resource chest and then we press a button that will fire this redstone and will fire the relevant item in that dropper and it will auto craft that potion for us and after we're done it will send us send it back to us to here and we'll have our auto crafting so that's how that works um oh then also one of our first automatic or well, one of our first farms also is a sugar cane, cane farm you press a button down in our base and it will fire pistons and it will push it down into hopper that also connects to the same hoppers that this runs into 
and it will click that. Okay, so I think that covers everything here. Yes, oh, and this is a bridge that's going to the village. Let's zoom out a bit. Bridge that goes to the village where we grabbed our villagers for our iron farm. Okay, this tree is here for vines, but it looks so good. I thought I decided to keep it here. Didn't want to chop it down. The initial idea was to chop it down, but yeah, well. And then one of my other very favorite um, projects, I took it to the next level. Uh, in my old world tour, I made a train railroad or train car dispensing system, which I took here as well. But I enhanced a bit with, because since then I learned a lot more redstone. And now we have different destination selections. So if we come into here and we just jump in a cart and we go off, look at this mine cart. It will just loop back. And you have to choose a destination. So without choosing a destination, you won't go anywhere. <laughs> so forcing you to choose a destination. And once you come back, Okay, so if we choose, let's say, let's start at the top left, slime farm. It will switch tracks. So now we can go off to a slime farm, and when we come back, it will pop us down here. And once we hit that button, the, um, what do you call it? The minecart will shoot off, and when it leaves, it will go over this detector rail and send a signal a reset signal resetting our destination selection so each one of these redstone blocks basically is a different destination that we need to choose and they stagger to correlate with the buttons on the other side so each signal sends a different redstone signal to different things and then back here is our wiring if we can call it that or our cabling for where redstone runs each one goes into a different direction. This was troublesome to set up some of them because they have to run in parallel and you have to use recent torches to extend the signal and this recent torch can actually interfere with this signal and a lot of things that we need to sort out. And then it chooses directions like here. Um, so if there's two signals coming into one direction changer, it means um, two buttons, there's two directions into the left direction. So one, two. <laughs> so each one goes to a different one. Okay, so we've actually chosen the slime farm. So let's write it. It's a, I think the slime farm is actually the closest one. So let's write it so that you can see what it does. Oh, and I built the initial bits underneath the water. Just... Yeah, for a bit of scenic routing and stuff. Okay, so this will be a little bit loud, so please turn down the volume if it bugs you. So here we go. And this is basically where we just <coughs> were, we were just at right here. So we're going to the left. And then it stops here. And when we return, we take the same route, just reverse. Okay, so this is our slime farm. Uh, let's go in here. So slimes will spawn on this pad and they will run automatically into the sides and the water will force them. So over here, it will go left or right, depending on which one is stronger. And when they fall in the water, the water will push them this way and finally push them onto magma blocks and over there there's a upper mine cart pretty much the same as I've done everywhere else that will pick up the slime balls and dump them into here and I think we are starting to get quite a lot of slime balls so yeah that's fun and this is now, this chamber is going backwards this far because we need to be far away, far enough away that the slimes get spawning. So let's head back to the base.
So we're following the same route and then we'll fly to the other locations. So that's our slime farm, it's very low tech, so you can do that with a couple of hoppers, which is just iron and a few chests. Okay, so I just want to show you guys, just want this thing to reset, finish resetting. If we go in a direction, there's a detector rail here. So this detector rail replaces a hopper right here. So if you go here, there's a trapdoor with, oh, not a hopper here, a minecart. There's a trapdoor with some uh, minecarts above it. And it will put another one back here. And there it goes. So then once we go over here, that one will send the minecart back up here. It will run here, run there. And it will go up there and it's like a base dispenser. And we'll put all the... I think we can go through here. And there's a stack of minecarts. It's actually two, four, six. I thought I had less. So this is a switch that we did to quickly switch this um, trapdoor so that it doesn't um, um, land multiple minecarts. Because if you do this wrong, it will land multiple land minecarts here and then it just messes up the whole system. Okay, so the six locations we have. Okay, so slime farm, we have a string farm, uh, we have an air portal, XP farm, mine shaft, and bone farm. So we were just down at the mine, mine shaft, and you saw the railroad there. So that basically just takes us there. Bone farm we'll go see now. The slime farm we checked already. Then we'll see the string farm and the XP farm, and then lastly the nether portal. So let's do the um, bone form first so it's not just bone it's bone and arrows because it's a skeleton spawner so this is very basic very easy also low tech and um, there's a skeleton spawner behind here uh, we can somewhere around here we can go through skeletons will spawn get pushed into this lava blade when they die the items will get picked up by the hoppers and it will go into this chest. Pick it up to so AFK here for a couple of minutes, grab it and you go back on your way. Um, so yeah, there it is. So it's very basic. The spawner just get pushed with water this way so if we close this up it's why is there so light in here oh because i have a torch in my hand here we go so this is a one of the mods uh, optifinder does this and it's dark so they get pushed down here down there and that's where, where the window is right there okay so that's basically very basic and extend the how this farm works. So that's a drop off that we just saw and we can see. So the other farms works in basically the same same idea. Uh, especially the string farm because we found a spider spawner. I wonder if there's a creeper spawner. I must check that out. So you remember we were just down here when we went to the slime farm. So that's a second um, destination. So left is slime farm. The old slime farm was up here. I still need to close this off because it was manual. <laughs> uh, we found this while mining actually, showing you this. So we came up here from our strip mining. Our mine is way over there. few strips running in each and other direction so this is a string farm originally i found it up there 
but making a farm it was easier going down a bit so over here is spider spawner so they spawn they fall in they get pushed underneath stairs so that they always get pushed down and then there's signs that blocks of water so there's one stream of water going up to there and then when it gets there the water switches to this side so it doesn't connect and then the same as the spiders of uh, the skeleton spawner it gets killed by a blade of lava and the items gets picked up and dumped into this chest easy as pie very low tech so it's just to find that that's the only problem and then the xp farm so i <laughs> actually this was the first time first destination in my rail system so i made a whole big chamber for <laughs> where the wiring is supposed to go for a destination selection and i never use it because i only all my other directions goes off in that direction in place of this direction so not a worry so once we do have more directions in this spot we can, we're actually set so over here we have a zombie spawner exactly the same water pushes it down and but small change here we have a staircase elevator with water so once a few zombies spawn right just wait for them to come out there they come the water will push them up the stairs so with the natural movement and the stairs and the water pushing them into the stairs they actually climb quite easily and then it will raise them and raise them up to here and then the water will grab them and push them and there's a hole and it will fall down and over here we can kill them so this is a xp farm and where we do more enchanting okay so i think that's it for the overworld let's get out let's go to the nether i know there's a end as well that we can go to but i'm not going there yet <clears throat> uh, we haven't made the spawner in in the actual let's play so we're not going there now as well uh, we'll do some things i have a plan for there if you check my other worlds uh, playthrough oh not playthrough world tour my old world all worlds world tour basically you would have seen what i'm doing in the end so i'm pretty much going to do this exact same thing over here um yes so we've done everything in the overworld i have no idea why we <coughs> came out um i can leave those doors open it's fine nothing will get in so we went to a bunch of bone farm, slime farm, string farm, and XP farm. So let's go to the nether portal. So this is the first location we're going to the left. Going to the left, and over here we're going to the right. Left is a mine shaft. Right is portal. Right here. So it's actually quite close from where our mine shaft is so this is where we came down up and down the stairs so a portal is just here so if you go through here that's what I like about creative mode you go instantly through <laughs> um, uh, through the nether portals okay so this is our portal room and I've made three hallways so that nothing can shoot us into different directions just seeing what we can find i was actually looking for a native fortress and we found one um but yeah nothing else over here there's nothing else here this was where we were busy still 
we want to go see what that is so i'm not going to go check that out now not in creative mode because that's cheating um where's our there's our pathway so i come and hunt gas here there's one just spawned we found that in a previous episode so that's kind of cool okay let's head back Again, each direction doesn't go anywhere except for this one. And there's another portal that we made that goes to the sand. So to show you this, this portal is 120 meters away from that portal, right? Oh, can't I go through here? Guess not. I really can't. Oh, interesting. So this was really a wall that I hit here. Glad I decided to tunnel. So this is quite far. So we'll get back to the distance now. The portals being 120 apart. So this is the nether port we found. We're mounting weather skeletons. And where we built a blaze farm. So this was interesting. Oh, wow, look at all of weather skeleton skulls. That we potential for the skeleton skulls. So what I'm doing here is I'm making a flat area to see where these guys spawn the most. Um, so that we can set up a farm for them as well. Of course we need to get skulls and we're not just going to get one of them. We're going to get a few. So there is a spawner up there. Blaze spawner and blazes spawn in here and they get stuck and you can kill them here without them hitting you at all. So let's go back down. So I'm still busy here. I've went through a few pickaxes just clearing this much. Still need to clear out a whole but bunch. I want to cover this whole area basically. Okay, so let's get back down here. And we're almost done. Not too far apart. So I want to go to the second portal to our right. So as we said, it's 128 meters away. If we go here... Oh, I don't have a... A beacon. Let me create one here. Then we can show when we're back at home. Ding distance. Let's make it orange. Safe. So once we're back home, I'll show you how far that is away. Okay, so in a previous episode, we discovered the Guardian. Uh, what do you call it? <clears throat> and a guardian temple or the deep ocean temple well it's actually quite far even in creative mode this actually takes a while okay there it is so we are going to, in our next survival episode, we are going to build a temporary base here and we're going to go harvest sand over there to flood this whole thing with sand so we can drain the water. Anyway, okay, so let me head back to my base quickly and I'll show you what I meant. So I'm going to pause the recording here and I'll bring you back in a sec. Okay, so we're coming back on our base. Okay, so I'm going to turn now around and we'll see the orange one, the distance. So remember in the nether, it was 122 meters. So every meter in the nether is 8 meters in the overworld. So 100, that's 800, 960 meters about, so let's say 1000 meters about. So 
orange one is 870 meters so that's why we travel in the nether so we'll set up another portal in the nether going to the guardian place because that's 1800 away so it's more than double so <clears throat> excuse me using the nether that will be much e easier okay so i think we covered everything in the world tour so if there's anything anybody wants to see how to build it let me know and i will link the proper episode or if there's some if you already saw that episode and you're not sure exactly how the mechanics work let me know i usually bring out a minecraft mini or a modded mini to show mechanics or something like that so let me know and i'll gladly show you and also if you want a quick response feel free to join me on discord link is down in the description um over there i i'm usually on discord active on discord uh, the channel is a little bit dead these days uh, lots of things happening so yeah but i'm sure it will pick up again um so, sometime so survival let's get back into survival mode and then we can get killed and we can't get we can't fly so next time you see me we are going to go back to survival building so we don't we've uh, uh sorry so i wanted to take a break from doing projects so that's why i thought this was nice and in the previous episode we also did some exploration so that was also nice so in the next episode a little bit of exploration we're going to check out the treasure maps that we found i already found the location so we need to go dig out the treasure and then we're going to build our temporary base so we'll take resources for that and we're going to need a bunch of chests and what i'm think was thinking of doing is we can build a railroad over the water <laughs> pretty much the same that we did here we'll just do that exact same thing over here and then we can send uh, minecarts with chests back and forth and we can do automatic loading and unloading so we just harvest the uh, resources here dump it into the chest and the minecart will take it unload come back but then we need to put chunk loaders all along this line of chunks so there's a bunch but yes we'll do that so but now let's call it an episode i hope you guys enjoyed this world tour it's a bit longer than our normal episodes but this is a special so yeah i hope you enjoyed it if you did please give me a thumbs up guys and if you haven't also already please consider subscribing to my channel i would appreciate it a bunch and come join me in discord as i mentioned come have a chat um, check out my other links uh, website is down at the moment but will be up uh, in the near future again or maybe depending on when you watch this episode it might be up already but uh, let's call it for now so thank you once again for joining me see you in the next one cheers